Hi everybody, my name is Josie and I am with Spellbinders and I'm here at scrapbook.com and I'm going to be introducing you today to our Glimmer machine and I'm super excited about it. We're going to go over the basics of the machine, but I'm going to start off by showing you all the different surfaces that the machine works with. And this is one of the main differences between our machine and the laminators that are out on the market now. And also one of the big differences is this beautiful uh, letterpress effect that you can get with the machine and the plates that you can't get with a laminator. Um, you can just the depth and the texture and the embossing and debossing effect that you get. There's no way to get that with a laminator. You have to do that with a machine and pressure. So both of those things together give you this effect. So let me just go ahead and get started. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go through some of the different surfaces that um, you can use the foil machine with. And one of the things that you need to keep in mind when you're working with different surfaces, it, there's a lot of different variables that go along with that. And also if you're using a different machine and different surfaces, you're gonna have to experiment by using shims. So either you're gonna add a shim or you're gonna eliminate the shim based on what surface you're foiling on. And also you can add shims by just using um, cardstock. So we're gonna go over some of those uh, different techniques right now. And so here is the actual Glamour machine. It's actually three separate components. You have your platform, which is this piece here. And this is where the connection happens. So what you do is you take this piece and you slide it into the platform and you push it in and you want that to lock. So once that is locked in and it's in place, you can then go ahead and turn the machine on. And when you flip the machine on, these three lights here, they're all gonna flash at the same time. So that's what you want to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and we'll see the lights all flash. So there they go. And now you'll notice that the only light that's on is the power light. And the reason that this is on is this is telling you that you, your machine is on and it's powered on and it's plugged in. But the beauty about this machine is that it does have a safety off. So it knows if you're not using it for a while, just like your iron, it will automatically shut off. So if you do walk away from it and you leave it on, you really don't have to worry about it. But I would be really conscious just to make sure that you turn it off if you know that you're gonna step away from the machine for a while. And then if you do step away from it and it does turn off, what you need to do is power it off, pull the plate back out, push it back in and then turn the machine on. So then the next light here is the platform ready light. And what this light indicates is when this platform is hot enough to get started foiling. Now, this is already starting to get pretty warm, but as you can see, I can touch it, but I'm not gonna leave my hands on there. But if you do touch it, you're not gonna burn yourself. You're not gonna hurt yourself. All right, so the platform ready light is on. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take a foil plate and set that on the silicone mat. And you'll notice that once you have it on there, you actually have to push it to move it around. And so it also comes with these great tweezers that are magnetic. And so you can just use the tweezers to move it around. Or if you don't have your tweezers handy, you can just use the tool in one and just kind of push it around in place until you get it where you need it to go. So once you have your foil plate set, you can go ahead and push this timer button. And what the timer button does, it lets you know when the plate has conducted enough heat for the foil to transfer to the material that you wanna transfer onto. So I'm just gonna go ahead and push that. And you'll notice that it's flashing. And, that, and once it turns solid, then you know that everything is ready to go. While we're waiting for that to turn solid, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you a few different things that I have here on my table. This is a piece that I was just playing around with, and, th and that's what I like the best about this, is that it, it gives you a whole new way of playing around and trying different things. So what I did with this is I went ahead and just took a piece of watercolor paper, and I just did a quick watercolor wash on it, and then I just foiled over it, and just look how beautiful that looks with the contrast of the shiny foil with the matte look of the watercolor. And you can also do it the other way around. You can foil first and then add your watercolor over it because the foil acts like a resist. And I'm also gonna show you how to take your leftover foil and repurpose it and use it um, to make this tag. So when you use your foil, you're gonna have the waste. 
that you pull up. So here's the foiled piece here. And then you pull this foil up and you're left with this foil. So I used it as a negative, I used the negative to create this tag here. So I save all my scraps of foil and the one thing that you wanna make sure is when you're saving them, that you just put them in a container where they're not gonna get all crumpled up and they're not gonna get scratched because if you scratch the surface of the foil, when you go to transfer your foils, you'll see all those scratches. So we're just gonna start off with just basic cardstock. So we're gonna build up our layers. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna cut your foil to size. So we went ahead and did that already. And then I'm gonna take it one extra step and I'm gonna go ahead and trim the corners. And what this does, and here I'm just gonna show you, even if you have foil on your machine, it's not gonna do anything. It's just gonna sit there, you can just take it off. It's not gonna transfer until you have everything layered together with your shim and your spacer plate and you run it through the machine that it actually transfers. So I'm just gonna cut these corners and then I'm just gonna go ahead and place this shiny side down. So you always wanna remember that the color or the decorative side of the foil is always face down on your plate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lay that down. And let's say it moves. All you have to do is pick it back up and just put it back down and nothing happens, it's not damaged. And you'll notice, I'm sure, I don't know how much you can see this in the video, but as the foil gets hot, it starts shrinking down. It starts taking the shape of the plate that's underneath it. And that's what you want it to do. So now I'm gonna take my cardstock and I'm gonna gently place the cardstock on top of the foil. And I like to just place this on the edge here. And that also helps with registration. So I'm gonna go ahead and just gently lay that down. And there's my cardstock. And now I'm gonna take my shims and I'm gonna start building my layers. So this is the shim that comes with the machine. And this goes on top of the cardstock. And then this is the spacer plate that comes with the machine. And then this goes on the very top. So now I have all my layers built up. So the layer is the foil plate, the foil, your material, your shim, and then your spacer plate. Now that everything is ready to go and the plate is heated up so we're ready to transfer the foil to our material, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the platform out of the base and into the machine. And I have small hands and I found that the best way to do this is just go ahead and grab the machine from underneath and just place your fingers under here and then I'm gonna grab the handle with my thumb and pull it out. And then I'm gonna take the platform, I'm gonna move it over to the machine and I'm gonna roll it through. And you'll notice that when I'm rolling it through that I'm going slow. And the reason I'm doing that is because you wanna get an even transfer of the foil onto whatever medium that you're using. In this case, we're using cardstock. And I'm gonna keep rolling until I get to the end. Now notice that I'm not rolling it all the way through to the machine. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stop at the end and then I'm gonna roll it back out. And, and you can see I'm going slow. If you go too fast, though, there could be areas of the plate that don't transfer. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take the platform, I'm gonna put it back on the base, and I'm gonna go ahead and push it back in. And the reason that I'm gonna do that is because I know that I'm gonna, I'm gonna be making more projects. So if you're gonna keep making more projects, if you just get in the habit of taking the platform and putting it back on the base and pushing it in, you won't have to wait as long for the platform to heat up again. So now this is, this is the most exciting part about the foil machine is to see what the end result is. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up. And as you can see, the, the foil sticks to the paper. So that's a great way to, to know that you got a great impression. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift it up and you will be able to see what's underneath. It's just beautiful, the look that you get. And it's, it's just amazing, like, look at that. The difference between this and the laminator is that when you use the plate, it's a metal plate, and what that does is it not only foils, but it gives you an impression of whatever the design is. It gives you that impression in the paper. So it gives it some depth, and that is the biggest difference to me between the laminator and the uh, foil machine and using the metal plates is that you get a true letterpress look, 
and the foil is really, really intense and it's on the paper and it's not going anywhere. So the next thing that we're gonna do is I wanna show you how we're gonna take our negative, the pieces of paper that I showed you to save, and transfer that onto a piece of chipboard. So what we're gonna do is the first thing we wanna do is we want to take a piece of cardstock and put it on the base. And the reason that we're gonna do that is because if you don't, this grid pattern will actually transfer through as well. So you'll get these lines through. Now, if you want that look, it gives you a little bit more of a distressed look. You don't need to use this piece of cardstock, but I wanna show you how beautifully it transfers and, and what a solid um, foil look you'll get. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my cardstock down. I'm gonna set my foil down and I'm gonna set it shiny side down. And then I'm gonna take my chipboard and I'm just gonna set the chipboard down. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and add an extra shim. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this down. And then I'm gonna set down the plastic shim that comes with the machine. And then I'm gonna add the spacer plate. And then I'm gonna pull this off. And I'm gonna run it through the machine. And I'm not gonna run it all the way through. Once I know that I've gone over my plate, I'm gonna go ahead and run it back out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this, put it back on the platform, and I'm gonna push it in so that way it starts heating up right away. I'm gonna take my layers off. Now we're gonna do the big reveal. This is the best part of foiling is seeing what happens underneath. So we're just gonna pull back the foil and you can see how the foil transferred. And so you're left with the negative writing from the plate. So here's the original. That's the positive, and here's your negative. So just think how pretty this would look on a package underneath a tree or on a card. So the next thing that we're gonna do is I mentioned using your wafer thin dies and giving your dies a whole nother life. And I think everybody in the office knows that the hemstitch dies are my favorite. They're by Becca Fecan. And I just love the way that they just give just a real fine um, detail and a really fine edge. So. With Becca's dies, you always have an insert and a cut die. So if you just wanted to make just a beautiful frame with just some gold touches, this is just a great way to do it. And again, you can't run your wafer thin dies through the laminators. So that's another big difference between the laminator and the glimmer machine is using the wafer thin dies. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that grid on the surface just to make sure that everything is straight and lined up there. And then I'm gonna take a piece of foil. I'm just gonna cover this all with foil. Now you have to keep in mind that the wafer thin dies are thinner than the plates. I'm gonna go ahead and use a piece of cardstock. So I'm gonna, that's the piece that goes next. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add three extra shims just of cardstock. I'm just gonna go ahead and add another one just to be safe. And then I'm gonna add my plastic shim that comes with the machine and then the spacer plate. So we, we're gonna let this warm up because we want the heat to make the wafer thin dies hot and so that way it transfers the foil onto the paper. So this is ready to go, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the hot platform from the base and I'm gonna run it through the machine. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and just pull this off. And if sometimes it's a little hard to get the foil started, you can use your tool in one just to loosen it and then pull that up. And look how beautiful that looks. I just love it. I, I just love the way that you can get these delicate, um, pretty gold filigree looks with the wafer thin dies. The, one of my other favorite things to do with this is letterpress. I love letterpress cards. Let me go ahead and remove these off of the plate. And I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, Paul Antonio's Love. So when I letter press, I like to use watercolor paper. And the reason I use watercolor paper is because it has some tooth to it and it almost has like a rag feel. And so what that does is when you press into it, it gives you a nice deep impression. But to get a really nice impression, what you wanna do is you're gonna lightly mist your paper with some water. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and set that down. And to do this, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna use your embossing mat. 
And you don't have to wait for the platform to heat up for this. And then I'm going to use the spacer plate. You don't need to use the shim plate for this. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that back in. And you can already see the impression from the back, how that transferred up. And just wait till I lift this up. Look how beautiful that impression is. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave this on here and I'm gonna go ahead and foil a few other materials. Um, this is wood veneer. And I love the contrast of the wood with the metallic foil. So we're gonna go ahead and put our foil down and then we're gonna take our wood veneer and place that on top. And I'm gonna go ahead and use a couple extra shims because the wood veneer is pretty thin. So again, depending on the thickness of your wood veneer is gonna determine the amount of paper shims that you need to add to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one more. And then I'm gonna use my plastic shim and my spacer plate. All right, now that the light's solid, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the platform from the base. I put it in the machine and I'm gonna run it through the machine. And then we're gonna remove our spacer plate and shims. We're gonna pull off the foil and look how beautiful this looks. I mean, look at the crisp foil transfer and how pretty the gold looks on the light wood veneer. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a piece of just thin cotton fabric. And like I mentioned earlier, this, is kind of, this has a smooth surface to it. If you do want something that has a textured look, then just go ahead and use more of a canvas type fabric. But I wanted to show you how nice the transfer looks um, when it's just on a piece of nice thin cotton smooth fabric. So again, I, my plate is down. I'm gonna go ahead and push that timer button. My foil's down. I'm gonna put my, my fabric down. And because the, the fabric is really thin, I am gonna go ahead and add a few extra shims on there. I'm gonna go ahead and grab one more. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use my shim that comes with the machine and the spacer plate. All right, so the light's solid. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off the platform. And I am going to run it through the machine. And then I'm gonna lift up the foil and look how beautiful that looks. Look at that, it's just, it's gorgeous. So let's say you are making, you know, a quilt. You know, a lot of people do art quilts for the wall. If you foiled some pieces and then quilted them into something, just think how beautiful that would look in a project. So the last surface that I'm gonna show you is ribbon. And as I mentioned earlier, how fun would it be to just foil the tail of a piece of ribbon and then tie a big bow on a package and have a message on the ribbon that's been foiled. So um, my platform's already heated up. I'm gonna go ahead and place my foil down. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back down into the platform. I'm gonna go ahead and push it in. We're gonna remove our shims and spacer plate. And you can see through on the back that it looks like it got a really good um, transfer. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over. And I'm gonna peel this away. And look how, look how beautiful that looks. Gosh, I hope you guys have as much fun with this as I have been at the office. I think I've been playing with this for, I don't know, about three months now, and I learn something new every day that I can do with this. So have fun with it, enjoy, and craft your little hearts out. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more from scrapbook.com, please like, share, subscribe, and leave a message. Happy crafting.